Hi all, welcome back to another video on Thomas Classic and Modern's YouTube channel. Uh, I'm Ross and today we're going to be carrying on with our 1360 short motor build. This video will include now installing the timing cover backplate, setting your camshaft end float, lining up your timing gears as needed and then we'll also move on to some basic cam timing and by that I mean how the cam timing would have been set from the factory. Uh, so I'll just get a few bits and bobs together and we'll crack on. Okay, so next stage now is we need to install our timing plate gasket and our timing plate, sorry, our timing cover backing plate. Um, we've already prepped and painted this bit obviously in the exposed bits. This is now cleaned, ready to go. All the threads chased as well. With this, this is a point of much debate um, amongst people. Gasket sealant. Do you use it? Don't you use it? How much do you use? Etc. Etc. My point of view, I've always used it. This is the gasket sealant we use. Victor Rhines Rhines a seal. Been using this for a number of years now. Very, very good product. Really like this. But any proprietary RTV not B&Q bathroom silicone. We see it on umpteen engine builds. It gets everything. So when it comes to using this, some people like to put a bead all the way around both sides, etc, etc. I don't. What I do is literally a quick bead here and there all around the gasket. Not loads. And then I spread it out and work it over the gasket so that all of the gasket will end up covered in a thin smear of the black. The danger is, I find, with using beads of silicone, uh, or sorry, of uh, gasket sealant, is that bead does get squeezed out. If your mating faces of your engine are all clean, flat, free of burrs, etc, etc, which they should be, then there shouldn't really be any need for a bead as far as I'm concerned. The only place that I put a bead of gasket sealant is between the diff housing and the gearbox casing on 5626 casings because they do not have a gasket. So in that instance, I use a very thin bead, thinner than the one I just put on this, between those mating faces. Other than that, any gasket that I ever fit, aside from a head gasket, of course, has this treatment. So that sealant is spread all around that gasket as evenly as possible, leaving none of the gasket in its original color. So that is just a very slight smear to take up any imperfections that you may have. So that's how that gasket looks. Just coated all over with a smear of our chosen gasket sealant. We then just drop it into place, lining up all the holes, And that's then stuck in situ. We then take our timing cover backing plate, drop that in place. Again, lining up the holes. We then take our new camshaft backing plate. These are marked with numbers, which is the part number, and they have a bearing side and a non-bearing side. Again, exactly the same scenario as the piston rings, numbers up, and that is how that fits. This is not a triangle. So if you try and fit it the wrong way, the bolts will not line up. 
it's a uneven elliptical bolt center and it fits so that the oil drain hole lines up with this oil drain hole. Then we line up and start our camshaft retaining plate bolts. Knock that out of place. Just wind those in just to make sure they're fully started. And then add the two lower ones. These have shape proof washers on them. Unless you are fitting the duplex timing gear, as I said, these are the standard fare shape proof washers. And they go in the bottom just like so. Make sure they are started. What I now like to do as we're working in this area and we have a gasket behind there, I like to now fit the 5 16 UNF bolts that go in the larger holes on the timing cover to snug that plate down while that gasket material is going off. Okay, so just the 5 16 These are 5 sixteenths UNF by 3 quarter. I start every one of these in the hole. Just to make sure that that timing plate now is lined up exactly where it is actually going. Okay, so in the first instance here, all of these 5 16 UNFs I torque to 16 Newton meters. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Those are torqued. We now move on to the camshaft timing plate torque and the bottom torque. Both the same, and I do these up to 12 newton meters. One, two, three. And that is it. That's our front plate fully installed and torqued up, ready for the next stage. Okay, so the next thing that I like to do now before we go any further is check that the uh, timing gears themselves now are a nice, easy sliding fit on both the camshaft and the crankshaft. Yes, the Woodruff key isn't in at the moment, 
not interested in that at this present time and I'll explain why very shortly. But first of all, timing gear and it needs to be as simple as that. A nice, easy sliding fit. You don't want it baggy um, and you don't want it, you should never have to hit those on. You need a nice sliding fit. That one is, that's lovely. And the bottom crankshaft pulley, exactly the same. Not baggy, but a nice sliding fit. The last thing you want to be doing is battling with these things. So happy with that, that's great. The next thing that we do is check and set our camshaft end float. That is controlled by the distance between this camshaft plate and this step on the timing gear. So how we do that is drop the gear into place, make sure it's pushed fully home. We then drop in situ our lock tab and the camshaft retaining nut. It has a registration boss, a flat machine surface that goes to the lock tab. Wind that on and then what we do is I torque that up to its full tightening torque before we check the end float. Okay, so we now need to torque this nut. The way I do it is I have a, a pro bar, something similar, drop it in one of those holes, take your torque wrench, set it to the required 88 newton meters, which is there. And the pro bar, screwdriver, whatever you're gonna put in there will just jam up like so and allow you to torque that. 88 newton meters, done. That is now torqued and then we move on to measuring the end float. Okay, so how we check camshaft end float? You will need a magnetic stand and a DTI in either millimeters or thou. I use one that's set in thou, it's just quicker. Set your magnetic stand up. Well, this one's actually already set anyway, uh, to line up with that. So set your magnetic stand up on the timing plate and then register the end of your DTI on the camshaft itself. You can use camshaft nut if you want to, I use the actual end of the camshaft. Then what you do, check that you've got some preload on it and set it to zero. Just like that. You then need to put some downward pressure on that cam drive gear to make sure that that cam is all the way in, in the opposite direction to your measure in the end float. So a bit of downward pressure and just check that you're on zero. Yeah, which we are, that's absolutely fine. What you are now gonna do, exactly the same scenario as when we checked the crankshaft end float. We are now gonna lift that camshaft up in its journals and see what that measurement is and see if we're within spec. How we do that, some sort of leverage, pry bar, etc. Uh, I've got a blunted screwdriver that I use for this sort of thing. Slide it in underneath and just lift gently. And that should give you a measurement. And there we have a camshaft end float of three thou. So push it back, make sure that it goes to zero again, put it back in and lift it up. So we have three thou of camshaft end float. So there we have in this instance, and this is completely undoctored, that is just as it's been assembled and done any prep work at all to this. Um, we have exactly three thorough camshaft end float. The factory spec is three to seven 
I like to set them as close to three as I can get them. Three thou, absolutely spot on. The next thing that we need to do is check that this gear is now in line with this gear as we drop it on. And we'll show you how you go about adjusting that if you need to. Okay, so how we go about lining up these gears. Drop in place now our crank timing gear. We haven't altered this, haven't touched it at all. This is now locked and in situ where it needs to be. We now want to check that those gears are in line. Simply put, you need a straight edge of some sorts and you need to run it across the gears. And what you need to do is see if there's any gap underneath those gears. Right, probably difficult for you to see, but if you come down slightly, you will see that we have a gap underneath this gear as opposed to that gear, which means that this gear needs to be raised up by a given amount to get those in line. Simply, all you need to do is check that gap underneath there with a set of feeler blades. We have quite a gap under there. So I'm going to start straight away. That's a 32 thou feeler blade. And I would say that's not quite enough. Not far away. But we will step that up to 35, I think. Okay. So we now have 35 thou. Keep your straight edge on there. And that's actually quite a nice drag and it doesn't doesn't push anything out of line so I would say that that gap under there is 35 thou we now need to add 35 thou of crankshaft shims which I shall show you in a second to there to bring that gear back up in line and then we'll recheck Okay, so we now have our crankshaft shims, 35 thou's worth, which is a few shims as you can see. We then drop those in place, drop the gear back on. Make sure it's fully seated home, and then we recheck the alignment. No light showing underneath any of those gears. Those gears are now perfectly in line. More than happy with that. We just move on now to fit in the woodruff key in here. Once we've done that, we just need to make sure that this gear remains a sliding fit, as sometimes when you tap the woodruff key back in, it can get a little bit out of shape and you need to make sure that the keyway lines up. That's what we'll do next. So first thing we do is take our new woodruff key, make sure that it fits in your gear, which it does. Nice sliding fit in the gear and fully located. Leaving our newly installed shims in place. You then offer the woodruff key up centrally to the slot. Just start it. And then a nice soft punch. This is a, a lump of brass and tap it home. And you will hear that has changed. You sometimes need to work them into the slot because they need to be level in that slot to allow the gear to go back on. And that looks pretty good. The next thing is to now check that that gear goes back over that woodruff key. Which, as you can see, it's made it tight. So now that needs checking and linishing to make sure that it's in. What you normally find is that it is now sat proud on top of that gear 
So therefore that gear now will not slide on there. This is the point where you do not go tapping it on and hitting it. You need that to be a nicer sliding fit as it was before you put the Woodruff key in. We know it fitted before, so we now know that the issue is the Woodruff key. We know the Woodruff key goes in the gear, so we know it's nothing to do with the width. It can only be the height of that Woodruff key in the crankshaft, which we now need to sort. Okay, so we've just run a very um, fine file across the top of there to make sure there are no burrs. We've made sure that it's fully seated. And now we have back to a lovely sliding fit. That's exactly what we want. There's no side to side slop and it's a nice sliding fit. The next thing we do is fit the chain, fit the tensioner, and then we'll move on to the actual cam timing. Okay, so we've now just removed the uh, two bolts out of the tensioner hole, out of the way, and we've taken our timing gear back off the crankshaft. I've slackened off the nut on the top of the, the camshaft pulley, and we've taken that off as well. We now need to install the chain and get these in a closer position as the factory would have ever used, which is the generic dot to dot method which is purely a start point for us with this build. <clears throat> and how I like to do that is lay the chain over the two gears. This is the excellent quality Iris single row chain. Again, we use these on 99% of our builds. We don't very often use a duplex now unless we're running vernier gears or we rebuild an engine that already has duplex timing gears. If we have a go-to setup, it's generally this. You now need to make sure that you have TDC. So your pistons are at the top of the bore. Don't need to worry too much about it. You can obviously tell when they're at the top. And generally, the Woodruff key will be pointing 12 o'clock straight up the center of the bore. This is only a start point for cam timing. The Woodruff key for the camshaft needs to be pointing at around about two o'clock, somewhere between sort of one and two o'clock on the clock face. You then drop your timing gear over the crankshaft first of all, because that's the first one that registers. And as you can see where I've put that up, we are one tooth out on the timing. Easiest way to rectify that whilst we're in this situation, peel back the chain, come around and follow that gap all the way around so that the timing gear slips around one tooth. And that is roughly where we want to be. Then just push the two down. You might need to rotate the camshaft somewhat. That is it. That is our start point. That is... That is exactly how the factory would have set your camshaft timing. No further attention paid from there on in. What we will now do, refit the camshaft nut and torque it up, fit the tensioner, and that is it. We will move on to cam timing, accurately cam timing this in. Okay, so there we go. We've uh, now retorqued the camshaft nut. We've added our tensioner. I just wanted to put a quick footnote in here about the tension on these timing chains you do not need to swing on the world if you push too hard on this you will break it so all you need is a little bit of thumb pressure there and you will see that's nice and tight this side and then just nip up these fixing bolts i'm not going to torque these in this instance because this is going to be on and off like the proverbial hose drawers when we come to setting the timing. So just hold a little bit of tension on there with your thumb, nip those up, and that is it. That's that camshaft drive assembly, fully in situ, end float set, dot to dot method used for the camshaft timing, and watch out now for the next video where we will move on from this stage 
and into setting the camshaft timing using offset woodruff keys. In this instance, we have no other adjustability and we will run through that for you and hopefully you'll find that informative. Hopefully this video has been of some use and given you a little bit of an insight as to what goes in. Again, in this video, clearance is a key. Um, they are the one that you've got to get right and they are the one that some people overlook. So hope you enjoyed that. Please give us a like and subscribe. Check out the other videos. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.